My mother used to play a game with me. She'd call me into the backyard on warm summer nights and point up at the sky. How many stars can you see? She would ask me, tickling me as I tried to count them off. Three in Orion's belt, seven in the Big Dipper, and behind those stars the band of the Milky Way, so dense and distant that it looked like a smear of pale blue paint across the sky. One night, when I was old enough to be a smart mouth, I grinned and said, all of them. She placed her finger right in the center of my forehead and said, No, Matamu, there are only a tiny fraction of all the stars in the universe. Most of them have traveled too far, and now they live on the other side of the darkness. One day, every star in the sky will join them, and we will be alone in the universe. Mom said I threw a tantrum. She held me tight and told me it was okay. She didn't understand. I wasn't sad or upset at the thought of all of that loneliness and darkness. I was angry at the stars. My little brain could only think, how dare they? After my anger passed, Mom leaned close and whispered to me. If anyone could see into that darkness, Ify, it's you. Just keep your eyes open. Anyways, I ended up with a business degree, a condo I can't afford, and enough student debt to follow me around for decades. Childhood ambitions? Not quite met. I was coming home for spring break, a week of sitting around with my parents and helping my mother out with the house. She had a stroke a few years ago, and Dad hasn't really stepped up. He acts like she should take care of the house even though she can barely walk. Watching the dynamic play out in front of my eyes is... not fun. That's why I'm stopping to meet my brother for a drink before I go home. And who knows? Maybe I'll meet someone interesting. Ify, over here. Hey. Come over here. Get over here. Hmm. Hmm. So, this place still looks the same. Oh, yeah. O'Hanlon's will never change. Kind of empty. Hmm. Give it an hour. This place will be full of 19-year-olds. They'll make you feel ancient. I'm 25. I refuse to feel ancient at 25. Ancient. I promise you. I haven't seen Mom and Dad yet. How are they doing? I've been so busy, I haven't talked to them in weeks. Weeks? That's years to Mom. So, how are they doing? You know what Mom says. Everything's fine. Dad spends half the day vacuuming the living room and the other half in the garage. He's making wooden furniture in there. Maybe. Mom's got a new walker. So, nothing's changed. Nope. Hey, quit looking at your phone. I'm just checking messages. Is someone else coming? Yeah, some friends might show up. Friends? Anyone I know? Yeah, maybe. Please don't tell me Tanner is coming. He might drop by. Ugh. He wanted to say hi. That's not what he wants. It'll be fine. He's such a kamaki. He's had a thing for me since third grade. That's a full 15 years of me ignoring Tanner. Hey, there you are. And I'm looking forward to my next 15. Next 15 what? Have a seat, bro. Please don't say bro. But he's my bro. I'm his bro. Bro, you're my sis. Now we're all saying bro. Just my wed for spring break. You want anything from me for spring break? Nope. Um, okay. Should I grab some drinks then? No, what I want to do? Instead of sitting here drinking, we should walk over to Wonderland. I haven't been there in years. 
the arcade? Yeah. Bro. What? He's talking to me. What? Wonderland was torn down. When? I don't know, two or three years ago? That can't be. Yeah. Lights caught fire and Wonderland had tons of smoke and water damage. You don't remember? Last time I was in town, though, I I saw it. During Thanksgiving? Yeah, it was some special event. It was night, but the place was lit up and there was a parade. A Thanksgiving parade in the middle of the night? Maybe there were LARPers. There was a crowd of guys in suits, and they all had gray masks and long fingers. And there was this band of, I don't know, steampunk goths fighting to get in. There was fire and a light show. Bro, that sounds wild. Please stop saying bro. I don't know what you saw that night. But Wonderland's an empty lot. I guess it's drinks at O'Hanlon's then. I'll go get us some beer. You two can catch up. No, no. I'll get them. They're on me. Bro, did I say something? I don't know, man. What do you need? Three pints of the Amber Ale. You got it. I hear you like a parade. It takes me a second to realize someone is talking to me. I'm surrounded by three people who look like they're going into battle against a Hot Topic outlet. The man who spoke to me is at my left shoulder. A short and scruffy fellow with a scruffed up red duster, a tweed cap over a head of curls, and a cigarette tucked behind one ear. Wait, make that two cigarettes. On my right is a woman with a leather coat and, I kid you not, a bandolier with shotgun shells. Her pink hair is done up in pigtails with a set of welder's goggles perched on her head. She's tapping the bar with a heavy metal bracelet. Hanging off her shoulder is a tiny woman with purple hair, overall smeared with grease stains, and the most enormous eyes I've ever seen. All three of them are fixed on me for some reason. Hi there! Uh, hi? I heard what you were saying at your table, about the parade in front of Wonderland. You heard me talking all the way across the bar? I've got tremendous hearing. Well, Savvy has got tremendous hearing. I have the hearing of a bat. (laughs) Okay, that's nice. Oh my god, you two, stop creeping her out. I should get back to my table. The bartender hasn't even fetched your pints yet. Get to the point, Valentine. Oi, I know what I'm doing here. These things need to be approached delicately. Three pints of amber ale. Thanks. Okay, now I'm going. Uh, uh, d- d- don't you wonder why, though? Why what? Why you were able to see Wonderland Amusements after it was torn down. Most people only see torn down buildings when they're still intact. I guess I'm just lucky that way. I have so many theories about temporal perception and interaction of quantum edge bubbles and arcane energies, your head would explode. Let's avoid the exploding head, Savvy. I mean, look, you told your friends Wonderland was all lit up. But that's not really what you saw. No? So what did I see? You saw... Savvy, how did you put it? You witnessed an emanation of magical will manifesting itself as a contained and stabilized photon field. I am so jealous that you got to see it. An emanation? Sure. And the crowd outside? Were they emanations too? Nothing so fancy. Just minions of evil facing off against a small band of plucky good guys. You know, standard hero stuff. Right. Well, it's been nice talking to you, but please leave me alone. Maybe you should find another place to drink as well. We just got kicked out of our regular bar. What a surprise. Someone picked a fight with me. You threw them through a wall. That's what happens when you pick a fight with me. Goodbye now. 
Hey, Iffy. Remember what your mother told you? What? That if anyone can see the stars beyond the darkness, it's you. Oh my gods, did you talk to my mom, or... He's plucking images from your auras, giving a few memories, and throwing in a bit of cold reading. It's a cheap trick. But it's kind of awesome, right? Who are you people? I'm Finn. That's Razor, and her big old friend is Samantha. Call me Savvy. It's because I'm Savvy. Get it? It's also my name. Sure, why not? As for the why, well, we could use your help in sporting something. We could just take your eyes, but I'd be afraid of dropping them. You could say no. You should probably just say no. There's a pesky kappa in the alley out back. It's making trouble and I've been hired to run it off. A kappa? Is that an animal or something? I think a kappa would take offense to that characterization. But it definitely isn't human. Who among us is? One bit of info at a time, Savvy. Look, Iffy, you've got a gift. Deep down, you know it. Whether you like it or not, that makes you different. The stuff of legends, I like to say. That means you have a choice. You can go back to your table, have your drink, get into a fight with your brother about your parents, storm out and maybe do something really foolish like let Tana take you back to his place. I don't think you want that. (sighs) No, I do not. Or... You can come out to the alley with the nice people you've just met and do some magic stuff. Huh. Can we pretend that we're sneaking out back to smoke up? Sold. You have some on you? Never mind. Do you? Uh, Hold on. Bartender, make me a Henriksen tonic with a cucumber slice. Cappers love cucumber, you'll see. They do? I did some research. Without Threadripper. I bet you just looked up Kappas on Wikipedia. I am heartily offended. By what? The truth? It was Reddit, thank you very much. Not any better. The pink-haired woman starts pushing her way through the crowd at the bar. The man in the cap sticks a cigarette between his lips, raises his glass to me, and heads after her. Over at my table, Tanner is in the middle of some emotional breakdown, which probably has something to do with me. George is patting him on the back. No thanks. I follow behind the three weirdos. I go with them because I know, no matter how strange they look, that I've been waiting for something like this. Some sign I wasn't out of my mind. That the pieces of my life actually fit together in a way that makes sense. No matter how strange or or frightening that picture looks, we spill out into the cold night air. I'm still holding the beers. Alright, Kappa! We know you're here somewhere! Come on out! Ask nicely, Valentine. Kappas appreciate politeness. Come out, please! So, what's a Kappa? It's a water spirit. They usually live in Japan, and it's rare to see them here. Are they dangerous? Not necessarily, unless they're hungry. Then they might come for your shirigodama. What is that exactly? It's a mythical ball-like organ that is said to contain your soul. If it's a mythical organ, why should I worry about a kappa trying to get at it? I mean, it's located in your anus, so... Gotcha! Don't want the kappa coming from my shira daka wapa ding dong whatever Oi, Mr. Kappa. Sorry, I don't know your proper name. I brought you a gin and tonic with a cucumber garnish. Very refreshing and cucumbery. What do you say we talk? A creature rears up out of the dumpster. Halfway human, halfway amphibian with bulging frog-like eyes. Steam curls from her shoulders. 
Weirdest of all, a small bowl is balanced on the creature's head that I have no other way to describe it, but it's like the bowl only half exists. I blink. The bowl vanishes from sight, flickers and fades in again. I should drop the drinks and run screaming, but instead I skim a sip of beer and take in the sight of a monster in a garbage can. I want to call her Oscar, but I worry that if I start laughing, I might not stop. Mm. Greetings to you humans and shifters. Greetings to you as well, friend. I am Finn Valentine, street magician and member of the Queen City Accords. And this is Iphianya Chorus, not a street magician. What? Representing the shifter faction is Reza Whiteflash and her first lieutenant, Samantha Savvy. Welcome to... that dumpster, I guess. What are you doing here? I have been pulled in the wake of something greater. Greater? An abyssal witch, dead but still alive, has ridden the tides into your world. All manner of things have washed up onto the shores of the present with her. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Say, mate, you can't be too comfortable in a garbage bin. We could help you find lodgings more to your liking. A pond, a lake, the pool at the Sandman Inn, maybe? Do not insult me with the offer of a chemical-laden swimming pool. Free Wi-Fi, though. I wrote down the password and everything. You are testing my patience, street magician. Look, I, I know some water-based creatures around town. There's a faction of sirens, and they owe me a favor or two. Be gone, pests. At least take this trick. Very sparkly, and it cost me ten bucks. Mm. I accept. Mm. More. More. If he hand over your beers. What? More. The creature leaps out from the dumpster, grabs me and pins me against the wall, blubbering and slobbering. Kappa spill sprays my face. It's gross, if you're wondering. Oh... I was going to take your drinks, but your soul. It's a shiny bright ball deep within you. Like a star fallen from the heavens. I think I'll take your shiri godoma instead. Without thinking, I dump the contents of my pint glasses into the bowl. The beer reacts violently to the liquid, fizzing and spilling over her head. The kappa stumbles backwards, shakes her head groggily, and burps. Oh, delicious. Very malty. A pleasingly toasted flavor. Dizzy now. Wow! You did it! Huh. Guess the bowl really was there. Couldn't quite see it myself, but get a kappa dizzy enough to tip over their bowl of water on their head and they're out like a light. Kappas are good at disemboweling people for mythical organs, but they aren't big drinkers. You base an entire monster hunting strategy around something you read on Wikipedia. Read it. Not any better. Worked, though. Anyway, it was Iffy who thought to dump two pints of amber ale into the creature's bowl. That did her in nicely. You mean three pints? Nah, I nicked one when you were pinned up against the wall. <sighs> you are the absolute worst, Valentine. I wasn't thinking ahead. That was just... instinct. Was it? Or was it the synchronistic twining of action and incident to one beautiful braid of destiny? You mean... did I come to O'Hanlon's to avoid seeing my parents and happen to go up to the bar to avoid dealing with Tanner and forget to put my drinks down? Or was it all part of some grand fate? No! Wait! Wait, what did you say? I mean, yes. Maybe? I'll take a maybe on this whole night. Let's get this cap over to militia headquarters. Reza, care to grab the feet? Mind the little fins. Wait, should I come with you? It's kind of a secret headquarters. 
Take care if you're in your chorus. How do I find you? I imagine you'll have no trouble. Just keep your eyes open. Huh. There you are. Bro, we thought you ditched us. Come back inside. You know what? I'm going to head out. Maybe take a walk. Where are you going? Wonderland Amusements. Uh, we told you. That place is gone. No, no. It just looks that way. You have been listening to the Graveyard Tapes, Side Hustle. Written by Aidan Morgan, edited by Dustin Ray, Angela Dumalag, and Nikki Ewart. Audio engineered by Robin of Psychonaudia. Produced by Brianna Jean Toiber, with the voices of Taylor Humany as Iphienia, Robin as George, Edwin Dumoulin as Tanner, D.G. Strawn as Bartender Owen, Chase Hunter as Valentine, Caitlin Sinnott as Riza, Casey as Savvy, and the Red Sparrow as the Kappa.